Daniel said that sometimes he was at odds with physiotherapists. Well, we're going to give we're going to give Farshadur a chance now. Um, I'm not going to spend a lot of time introducing Farshadur. I think she's known to many of you, um, but she's going to talk to us about neurophysiotherapy and the various techniques. And if you've been down to her workshop, you'll see that she uses all sorts of crazy things to uh, to help us. And she's still a bit of humour. So, um, Farshadur, over to you. Someone said to me, they don't think much as what to drop. And they're right. It's pretty lousy. But there you are, and I'm not very photogenic. So, as a therapist, sorry, you can't get it. Okay. And you can't see me. You see the phone? You can't see me. Ah, there you go. I use the mic. You can't see me, you can't hear me, but here I am, very effective. <laughs> very effective. <laughs> and I make you all work very hard. Now, <laughs> I thought we need to have a bit of humour. And you've been listening to all day, to accents, neurons, what to do. Your brain is being pretty much dropped off. So here we go. Does your brain feel like this? <laughs> Does your brain feel like this? Yes. Okay. Here we go. We've got time now. If you can stand up, all of you stand up, please. Okay. And all of you that you can't stand up, sit down. That's fine. I expect that. <laughs> now, I'd like you to look to the left. Don't move your head. Just look to the left. Look to the right without moving your head. And just be aware how that movement is quite difficult. Just shift in your eyes. And as you shift your eyes to the left, be aware of how your body shifts to the left. And be aware of your body shifting to the right. Not look to the left as you move your head to the left. Oh, good. And to the right. And you see your whole body transfers your weight. Okay, now stretch your arms above your head and really move. <laughs> Okay, that's the weight. You have short arms. If you can't do one arm, you can cut the other arm and just really lift. Gotcha. We like you. Take your time. This is good. Daniel, give me that. All right. No, back that way. One so, more time. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Ah, oh, very good. Be happy. And don't worry, you know, you've all got TM, but so that's all it is, TM. All it's got at the end, that's all it is, it's no big deal. So all be happy. There you go, Thanks. Oh no, there we go. I couldn't resist this. I had to have a picture of a brain. Because after all, I'm a neurophysiotherapist. I've got to talk about the brain because am I passionate about this? Yes, I am. Do I get excited even though I want to retire, but I still get excited how this functions? It's the most fabulous piece of equipment you've got. Don't worry about all this FES. Oh, there you go, you've got the brain. And it's the most fantastic tool. It goes wrong with the rewiring, but A, it still is fantastic and it has a lot of neuroplasticity. And that has been most exciting bit. The reason I'm excited about it, because last 24 years I've been working by myself in my little practice. And what I've done, that I've seen people over many, many years. I've been able to, or fortunate enough to see people over 20 years. And that has given me an idea that how much we can learn, and how much I can learn from you, and how much you can stimulate this brain. And it's a fantastic piece of equipment. It's really most exciting. What I'd like you to be really aware of it is this bit here, the parietal lobe. And I'd like you to also think about somatosensory part of the brain and your motor part. The same token, you can see how each part of the brain is connected. There is no separation. We don't do movements one bit and then we have to think about what to do the next. All movements are connected. And that's such a beautiful skill. When you see a dance, 
you don't see a dance just thinking about what to do next. They actually move all together, and that's what the brain does. The brain's got the ability to give us command. So how does that work? The very second you think, I am going to move, you jolly well move. You don't think I'm not got to do this and I got to do the other. You just move. So the brain is the most important organ and gives you ability and command to every organ in the body. Now, what happens when the wiring goes wrong? And then you've got the wiring wrong from here. But what you've got to remember, the spinal cord is connected to the brain. And the only access you've got as a neurophysiotherapist is the, your peripheral nerve that supplies your skin sensation, joint sensation, body sensation. Those are our access. So you have to find a way to stimulate. And I don't believe that you can just all sit and do nothing. You can all learn to move through sensation. And that's how we learn sensation. And that's how we learn movement. Okay, this is me. Maybe more beautiful than my photograph. <laughs> I had to think. First, when I was introduced by to TM, I had to think which way I'm going to work with TM because I had only seen TM when I was at the National, which is back in history time. You don't want to know the date. But in history time, we were very limited with the ideas of what to do with TM. We certainly very narrow in our vision about neuroplasticity. We didn't know that you could get axonal regeneration. We had no idea how to stimulate any parts of the brain. So when I started looking at here, my friend here, Lou Gray, started with Sally, uh, the support group, so I joined them because I basically wanted to learn and I hadn't seen many TM. So I really wanted to learn. And that was the best learning. So I attended the supposed to. And wow, I was amazed. I thought, I can't possibly see how everybody could have the T4 and have so many different ways still the T4 be affected. So that really excited me to think, what way can I affect the treatment? What way can I make this person move more coordinated? And how can I help them? So what I was most surprised is that there was sensory loss. There was also abnormal sensation. There was also motor loss, pain, unbalance. But nobody had, I had seen in my, as my colleagues, work on sensation. And I was quite amazed about that. So I started working. I started working with sensation because through sensation, I could stimulate the parietal lobe. Gosh, that's my favorite section. <laughs> so I thought, this is what I'm going to do. So thinking hat on, I thought, what to do next? Looking at children, normal children or normal adults, see how they learn movement. We learn movement through patterns of movement. We don't learn that this biceps is working and is doing this, or your triceps is doing this. We're well, thinking about how to take the food to our mouth, or how to take hand to scratch our nose. We don't. We just work always in a pattern of movement. Vision is another vital important piece of equipment that we use. Hearing, joint perceptors, and spatial awareness. So I'm going to go through vision. There is no visual loss in TIA as such. But what really happens is that because there is a loss of balance, because there is a loss of joint perceptors, because the sensation is abnormal, the gaze is always down. The moment your gaze is down, your head is down, your back is in inflection or bent, and of course you can't lift your legs. The same token, this gives you abnormal posture. So you cannot transfer your weight from one leg to another two step. You can have FES, but if you don't learn the pattern of movement, how to transfer your weight, you can't use it. Though I love the FES, but there's a place for everything. <laughs> Bossy outside, bossy. <laughs> so, here we've got my lovely friend. This chap has got a DM and he's just learned how to use his eye movement. And what it is, is a tracking. It's so difficult to actually use the peripheral vision 
the proof of vision in most of you, because you've been gazing down for so long, you've just lost to look on the side. And you can see, the moment he doesn't focus, he falls. But he, when he's actually tracking and following the marble, and that's not a very complicated piece of equipment. It's a piece of cardboard, and he's looking at marbles. And you can see, he's actually able to reach way out of his center of gravity, and he's fine, and he can, he can do it. And the same token, he's having fun, but he's learning eye tracking. And then he falls, it's fun too. He gets up sometimes. Sometimes he gets very cross with that, but <laughs> he's able to reach way out of his center of gravity because he's not learning to actually use his eyes out. He's using his peripheral vision. And this is just pretty recent, so it's possible to do. He's just recently learned to track. You can see that. And he's learned to look and stop. And am I so proud of him? I am so proud of him. He's just done beautiful. Look, he stops, looks, and is able to transfer his weight. And he's a beginning of trunk rotation, which he didn't have before. Okay, one nice thing about this chap, his parents are sitting here and looking at me, but I adore him. He's always in a different outfit. So he's always, always is either a soldier or a knight or a builder or an uh, ambulance person or a, uh, somebody. And I have to play those games. God help me if I don't play when he's a knight and I don't have the sword. And often my sword would be lying toilet paper. So we have a sword. And that, in a way, that imagination has given him power to regenerate neuroplasticity. And so he can be somebody, and he just forgets totally that he can't do this movement. He's in that mode, and off he goes. Okay, this is the most complex form of eye contact and eye tracking. You can see you can be as twisted, you still got your balance. And you can see this chap is just really thinking about my goal. And he's not thinking about anything else. The entire body is twisted and he's aiming to get the ball in the goal. And look at this, just totally focusing on the eyes. So the eyes tell you the direction of movement. Every, every action we do... <laughs> Hi, Astrid. <laughs> Sorry, I got to speak as well. <laughs> every, every action we do, it is eye movement. And what happens that we start compensating with this? We start compensating with our actually eye movement. The same as any other part of the body, we don't use it correctly. And it causes problems. One of the ways that it causes problems is your walking pattern. So when you're actually supposed to transfer your weight from one leg to another, if you step over the right, you need to gaze to the left side. But if you're looking down, that doesn't happen. So you fall. So it's really important. <laughs> hearing loss. You don't have a hearing loss. But what happens when you're in a crowded place? You all panic. When you hear that sound and there's other sounds, you just get sensory overload and you just don't know what to do. And you lose your balance. So what is it to do? I love this use of language. I think you all need to learn as when one part of your body is affected, you get sensory overload and you just think, oh my God, I can't do this. To actually give yourself a trigger word. Give yourself a trigger word that you can actually use that. So it could be just toes up. It could be just looking to the left. One trigger word really helps you to be in command of your body in a crowded place. We've seen that, I've seen that with children, that they lose their balance when it's in an overcrowded place because they just cannot filter, they cannot filter this noise. That's again, is all the stimulation going into the parietal lobe. Does that make sense to anybody? Everybody's just not enough. Not in, yes. Are you all exhausted or is just not enough? Okay, joint perceptors. The physios, we love these words, you know, it just sounds so great. <laughs> we all use it all the time. But what is it? There are all the perceptors that are in every single joint, every single tendon, every single muscle, the spindles, 
they give all the information about where your body is in space, and guess what where it goes this information? To the parietal lobe. So this parietal lobe is really important that we stimulate joint perceptors, we stimulate standing, we stimulate the muscles, we stimulate the length, we maintain that in order to get the, the body going. So you send the information to the brain. Okay, if you don't feel your body, and today I've had um, a lady, may I just mention your name? I don't know where you are, Patty. But, okay. I had a person today, she had a lot of pain with a soft touch. So her clothes touching her was really uncomfortable. And it was, she was like almost shaking. That's one type of sensation. But I had another lady with a sensation that it was abnormal. Um, she felt such a lot of pain and she was exhausted with this abnormal sensation all over. But there is a way you can deal with it as a neurophysio. And it would change. When you've got all this pain, when you've got abnormal sensation, your posture changes, your equilibrium reaction changes. So you just go down and you don't really feel good in yourself. The reason you don't feel good in yourself because you're feeling all this abnormal stuff and you need to change it. And you can't change it. <laughs> okay, this is the wonderful area again of somatosensory and thalamus. So when the thalamus has the a wonderful image of the whole body, now today what I've done is very interesting because the moment you feel abnormal something in your body, you feel either pins and needles or you feel like any other kind of sensation, all you think is I can't do it, I just can't do it. And so what I've done today, I've either brushed somebody or I've uh, used a vib vibratory sense to stimulate that. And what has happened, at the same time, I've given them a language. It feels right, it's a pressure, this is a nice pressure. And then they stood up and they really smiled because something, some stimulation has happened. And this is the only way we've got as a neurophysio, we've got a tool that we can stimulate the dorsal ganglion and in the, up in the brain. We've got a tool, and we can, we've got tools, I should say, as a neurophysio, and it's fun to do. Okay, they may look crazy, but all of those balls and cushions, they're sensory, they give you sensory information, and sensory information is what you need to send to the brain. I mean, we had a lady today standing on just getting balance, just on a cushion, and that is so interesting to see that you can make those changes at the end of half an hour session or even 10 minute session. So change is always possible to do, achieve. Well, some of you have been subject to my torture today and you've had brushing. Brushing technique has been used many years in the physio land. Um, since 1950, Rudy's been using it, uh, Sue Edward has been using it, they've been writing a lot of papers, so they've done brushing to get muscular action. And so, you know, if you tickle your toes, you can get your toes going up. So that's one way. You could also brush downwards and you can get um, activity in your muscle. But what I've also done to get brushing to create sensation, the same token I've done brushing to confuse the nervous system. So if you've got another sensation, your brain thinks, oh, this is something I haven't felt. So when you start busy feeling the sensation of brushing, whatever pain you've had, that is also reduced. So that is a wonderful sense, what a wonderful tool to use. I've used the vibratory sense of machine, I've used a power plate to create muscle spindles working, and you can then afterwards stand up and you feel really good that you, something's been done to your entire body. Now, music and creative visualization. I think it's a tool that, as a physiotherapist, we didn't know enough about. And the more I use it, the more I realize how effective it is. So finding a way that you can actually give yourself this information. Now, how do, I, how do you do this? It's not about being positive and you've got pain. Now, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that you can use a creative language. You can use it, for instance, if you are, um, want to bring your legs up towards your chest, it's no good saying lift, because the moment you say lift, lift means effort. And then you have to put effort 
you're all exhausted, you don't want to do it, and it's hard. But if you say soft knee brings your knee up to your chest, this naturally happens and it's a lot easier. So using words that it makes your body moving differently is kind of key. So language is a key. And why is language is a key? It's another area that connects the brain. So the moment you think of a movement, you give yourself a language, and that language gives you ability to move. So if you have sensory loss, and you've got sense abnormal body movement, you can't organize yourself, you need to learn a language which you can organize yourself in space. And it's vital. Music, well, it actually works on the left parietal. Oh, I'd love this parietal again. <laughs> music works on all, all parts of the brain. The rhythm of the music enables you to move too. So if you want to have samba, you really get a lot of hip movement. If you want to have Mozart, you can relax and reduces your spasticity. So you can actually use the music to relax or to do creative visualization to reduce your pain. It's very effective. Well, I have to come to this, you see. I can't do this without FES. <laughs> so there you go, motor function. When it's a loss of a motor function, I would use the FES in a functional pattern, and I'll show you what I mean by that. Um, <laughs> I'm more interested about you learning the sensation of movement rather than um, being stimulated. Well, stimulation is also interesting, but having the sensation of movement is very interesting. And depending on which component of your motor pattern is lost, I'm interested to teach you that. So, what, how do I do that? This is my friend. And the posture in this person is her back is really arched. The knees are really bent forward and it's really difficult to walk. So on an air cushion, I can get rid of that. Her spine is nicely straight. Some of you experience this air cushion. It's really wonderful. It also gives you the sensation of movement. So you can have very small lateral movement of the trunk and pelvis. And again, it's vital for your walking. And here I can also work on her core. Because it is comfortable, because it is the way that the brain is being stimulated, that your body is elongated, the spine is really nicely straight, she's actually able to focus just on her core muscle work. Okay, I've done the core, but I'm also interested in lateral movement of the pelvis because all of you have got eyes down, and this is the way. So, this is not effective way, this is tiring. And this is the movement, this tilt of the movement is only possible on the cushion. Because you cannot describe this movement. If I describe this movement to anybody, everybody gets confused what they've got to do. While if they lie on this cushion, immediately they get it. And the other interesting thing you've got to look, person is looking to the direction of movement. So I've prepared this lady. Okay, I've used the different FES. I haven't got the bike yet, but I've got some other form of bike. But I have either used a neuro track or I've used the uh, auto bike. And sometimes I've used the bionics. Sorry about the quality of this picture. I'm not a good photographer. <laughs> Plus many other things, but there you go. There you go. <laughs> That's what it is. So here I'm using the air cushion and the FES together, trying to get the elongation of the trunk and correct alignment of sitting. This is yes, you can see it. The moment, the moment this works, her back extends is working, she's actually moving the cushion and the cushion moves back when she has got abdominal working. So that gives her the sensation how to work these two groups together. When you haven't done it for so many years, your abdominals and your back extensors, you can't be thinking, I'm going to use my core and I'm going to tighten here. It's hard. While this will give you an opportunity to feel the sensation of movement. And when you feel it, you certainly do the movement. Okay, you're standing. And the is a lot less. 
Again, you're standing on air cushion. And the air cushion gives you, because if you've got a low dosis and you're in this posture, your weight is forward onto your toes. And when your weight is forward onto your toes, your knees also locked in, so you can't move. So, when you're standing on air cushion, it gives you the extension. It transfers your weight back onto the heel. And when you're standing on your heel, you can get your core automatically engaged. And that automatic movement, it's just, just lovely. So you can see there's a still a bit of low doses here. I'm not saying we got 100% rid of it, but you can reduce it. And so this person then is able to um, put that into daily living function. And it's easy to get one of those, um, it's got Airx, Air mat, and you can actually buy it now. And it's very useful. The other useful thing about, the other very interesting thing is, after many, many years, um, this person had an insole, and that corrected the alignment of the feet. So if you are like this for so long, it causes you problem. You cannot stretch in your knees, and you don't even know how to do it. But the insole, you can see, is actually shifted her weight, and it's really good balance. And my friend Sam has done that. He's done a very good job of really creating this balance for her. Okay, spasticity. Spasticity is a phenomenon that some of you experience from it. Some of you are on a drug to reduce it. Some of you are not on any drugs. And there is also a way that you can learn to manage it. All of this is important to know that you are able to manage your own self. And that is the tool. Because some of you, or a lot of you, can't receive physiotherapy. But if you learn what to do yourself, you can help yourself. You can have a better quality life. So what we do here, the nature of the ball is shifts and elongates the spine. I can really stretch the hip flexors on the opposite side. And just doing that, it reduces the adductor tightness. And you can also see the direction of movement. Sometimes. Sometimes this happens, sometimes that's happened, but this one is happened. So this is really the rolling on the ball. It's really very, very easy way to do. You can all just roll on the ball and reduce your spasticity. It does really work. Okay, this time I use an air cushion to create this sensation of lateral shift for the person. So once you create this sensation of lateral shift, then the person can actually know what you are on about. And then you actually do it, what happens, the whole pelvis is nicely retracted where it ought to be. Otherwise, it has a tendency to protract and collapse. So this allows this to happen. And with the ball there, he's able to stop the adductor spasticity. So something so simple. It's really simple way you can actually move and improve your own quality of life. Balance. Well, it's a very, very difficult topic. As in many things are involved in the balance. You need to maintain your static balance. You need to learn to do your dynamic balance in sitting, in standing, and in walking. And walking over objects, and balancing while you're walking outside too. So some of this is because you've got loss of sensation. You don't feel your body. Some of it is the compensatory movement that you have adopted, partly because A, you can't do the movement, or B, you're frightened to do the movement. So instead of standing upright, you're all bending down, and quite a lot of you got a stick that is very short, so you're leaning forward like this. So your base is totally different. And you put in a massive effort to transfer your weight from one leg to another. So if anything is in front of you or on the side of you, you're gonna not be able to deal with it. And I work a lot with air cushion. I love these air cushions because they actually give you the sensation you need and you can walk, she's quite hard. And you can see she's, this lady's got also weight on her ankle. And the weight, it does several things. One, that it 
improves the joint receptors. It also works on the muscle spindle and the ligaments. The other thing it does gives it the sensation that more muscle gets recruited, so it would enable her to lift. It's too dark, is it? Okay, this is standing on the air cushion, balancing on one leg, at the same time catching a ball. But if you can't do that, you haven't done your balance properly. So you really have to get get to work. And what is nice to see is that entire extension on one leg. Because if you don't have an extension on whichever leg you are, then you can't create rotation, you can't move. So you really need to be able to maintain extension, as in your whole body is straight on one leg. And when it is straight on one leg, your eyes, can you see how immediately the eyes shifted? It's looking to the direction of the ball. And again, I'm, I'm a bit nasty person. I'm moving about. She has to deal with me moving about. So eyes gaze has to constantly change, as well as balance on the cushion. <coughs> and the last one. <laughs> Astrid comes and just organizes this. <laughs> So moving in and out of it's really, again, is another thing you have to relearn to do. It becomes too scary when you've got objects in front of you because you don't use your lateral vision. So this is another way of teaching you to deal with your balance. All of these are really simple. And the whole point about it is that you can be empowered and you can take the responsibility and improve your own life and your own quality. You don't need, if you don't get a neurophysio, you can actually find another way, get one lesson and carry on. And every six months to go to another, to go to the same physio and get some more, as Daniel says, um, package, I like this, package. Get a package of, we don't have packages here, but anyhow, this is the way we could, we could actually help, help you. Now, once you've actually learned your movement, you could all do Pilates, you could do yoga, you could do Tai Chi. All of those activities are very good. You could do swimming. You could do any activity you like. You can improve your own ability and you can time your own movement. You can improve your walking ability outside and inside. And I know a lot of people really scared of walking outside. Pavements are bad, so eyes is always down. So think about looking ahead now looking tall, thinking about your whole body is able to change. And there you go, I'm not done. Ashford, well, thank you so much. Um, she really is an amazingly motivating woman. And um, I've seen the impact of that with people who go to see her. And she really is quite fantastic. If you have an opportunity of going into a little den to have some treatment, then I'd certainly recommend it. But thank you very much indeed. And when